Hi and welcome to a video about multiplayer chess clocks for Commander if you want to. Why though? So in CDH tournaments you have something like a 90 minute clock together. Once the 90 minutes is over there are 5 turns left and then the game will be over. But how time consumed can vary. For example, a game could end up in something like this. Player 1 consumes 10 minutes, player 2 consumes 40 minutes, which is close to half the entire time, player 3 consumes 15 minutes, and player 4 consumes 25 minutes. And in the end, some CDH tournaments just goes to time. Now I should mention that this is a problem in 1v1 as well. Like we've all been in a game where one player just takes more time than you and makes the game go to a draw. And yeah, that is sad and this isn't actually something you in general have control over like you can ask a judge and say that this is slow play this is just taking time judging slow play is really hard but there is a simple solution chess clocks a big problem is that they're just one v one orientated however i have some good news there are online multiplayer chess clocks so here if you search that on google you'll get to this page click this this will take you to this web page, link in the description below of the video. Click new clock. Here you can insert the number of players, we're going to choose 4. And you can insert the amount of minutes, I actually recommend 80 minutes. And then create, create clock. And boom, here you have a chess clock. And you also have a link that you can share to other people that you wanna have joined in on this clock. Because you're gonna have your opponents like sitting here and clicking on the clock as well of course. Now the first thing you can do, or you don't have to, but you can edit the names and change player 1, player 2, player 3, player 4 into let's say, well you could write the player names, but here we have Edric, Cissé, Timna, Kram and Godo and submit and suddenly boom you have the names here. You should first of course figure out the turn order before you do that, but you can re-edit the names again later so it doesn't really matter. Now when you click on this play button, boom, time starts and you can see here that Edric's time is clicking. Now if anyone who is inside this web page, clicks on this thing, it will jump to the next person and boom, here you have a multiplayer chess clock. And now if you had a 8 minute time limit to this entire thing, then each player is going to get 20 minutes each. And here you can see the time remaining and time remaining for each participant. So you can click here once again, you pass this circle, you pass again, and once you click here, it goes up there. And if you need to pause the clock for judge calls for some reason, you can just click on that thing right there and you have paused it and then you click this and it keeps going again. So me and Pontus usually record games with our patrons and such but we've also actually play tested the chess clock thing for like 8-10 games or so and I gotta say it actually works pretty good, better than I expected. We might see if we actually record a chess clock game and showcase how that actually looked like in the future. But the reason I'm making this video is to basically share my experience with this. It increases skill quite a lot. Because you actually make a lot of misplays. I make misplays with this. And a lot of people just forget to activate their planeswalker. Forget various different things. Taps the wrong man. And go, no, I tapped wrong. I can't cast my counterspell and such. And I kind of like that. This chess clock thing is putting a stress to the participants. And it's making you think more. But also it is demanding that you think faster. And that you think correctly. Yeah, like you think smart. You need to figure out a smart thing to do among all of your options. And you need to think, figure it out fast. So a few things we have implemented is for example. You die at the end of your turn if your clock runs down to zero. So for example. You're, it's on your turn and you have let's say a combo you, like you're resolving an anvil breach combo you're resolving a very complicated combo of sort your clock runs down to zero at the end of this turn you're going to die you're still able to win during the during the time you have remaining is incorrect because you have no time rem remaining but you're still able to win during this turn but also, for example, if your clock actually runs out at the end of someone else's turn, you will die at the end of that someone else's turn. But at the end of that someone else's turn. So no stacks, pieces, no cards disappears in instant speed directly while on the stack, just from out of nowhere, they will disappear at the end step. This means that people can actually react and also plan because 
during the game you can sit and see if someone's clock is actually reaching a low count and there you can predict okay this person is going to disappear potentially soon so when that stacks piece disappear i can strategize around that and such and we did have a few games where people did die to their clocks running out but we never had a game that finished with everyone's time running out because once people are starting to drop the game progress faster and people disappearing means it's becoming a free 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 and a 1v1 and such games also started to become faster because people felt a stress so you were more focused on actually executing your actions and honestly i kind of like that because you're basically reward reward is the wrong word here you're being penalized by thinking too much if you're sitting and thinking about your actions you're losing time and that could lead to your inevitable death eventually if you're thinking too much and taking too much time and if the game just goes too long and you have been consuming too much time you will eventually disappear because of this even though people had 20 minutes remaining and we were on an 80 minute time clock games that went very long could go to something like 45 minutes and people could actually die somewhere around that but i kind of like that too it means that the game progress faster which means you can play more games if the skill levels increasing a tiny bit so overall it was a positive experience in all of that regard however i should mention that there's definitely a brain pain to this if you're sitting and playing a like a very late in the night i mean this is gonna be a problem for you like a lot of people actually mentioned that this is awesome it's really fun but i i can't keep doing this for too long it really hurt it really puts energy and pressure to the brain so to say when you have unlimited time which you don't actually have but when you have everyone's resources to consider you can think much longer and yeah then it's easier i should actually mention that a lot of people actually won the game around like 17 minutes 16 minutes so cdh is fast we all know that but people played really fast and maybe sometimes even stressed out playing as fast as they could and realizing wow i had so much time remaining i tried to execute that as fast as possible i could have taken it slower so this implementation really makes people stressed out and yeah that's a thing i kind of like that personally i personally like being a little bit stressed and feeling under pressure i'm under the clock i don't want to be that on a regular chronicle basis like i don't want to be stressed at work but during a competition like this I wanna feel the pressure. However, one thing you have to mention here is that there's going to be a lot of clicks. The way we executed this is that we had several monitors, because then you can have one monitor where you're looking at the spell table, and then one monitor looking at this thing. So it's otherwise you have to like tab out and jump between monitors. So if you're going to do this on like one monitor, you're on a very disadvantage, so to say. On the other hand, you can have this on your mobile phone as well, of course. That's a link you can actually join, so to say. But to give you an example of how the games actually looked like, so for example, Edric here would say, okay, I start off, I draw a card for turn, I play this land. Now, playing a land does not actually create a stack, so there's no reason to pass on the priority here, but then he would go, have this land cause a soul ring. And then he passed a circle on the soul ring, and everyone just passes around the circle, go back, okay. Sol Ring resolves. I will tap the Sol Ring and cause a Felor Stone. And then you have to pass in a circle again, like this. And then normally what we would do is that then Edric says, okay, I'm gonna go to my end step. And then he would, of course, pass in a circle because you can actually do things in the end step. Like people could crack uh, some Simian Spirit guys and cause a Whirly Tutor, who knows? And then turn his pass to Cisse and Cisse would do the same thing. Now this becomes very complicated once you have a Mystic Remora in play. So let's say CC have a Mystic Remora in play. Or Edric actually has a Mystic Remora in play. So CC casts a Sol Ring. Casts on the Circle of Sol Ring. It gets here. Fish Trigger. Pass on the Fish Trigger. The Fish Trigger goes in a circle. And then CC gets the option to actually pay for the Mystic Remora Trigger. She doesn't. And then you circle around again the spell CC would cast in this case. Same thing with attackers. So let's say CC is attacking, going to combat steps. Because you can actually do things before you announce attackers. So CC declares she's going to attack. She hasn't declared what's attacking and who's being attacked. And here you can have politics things again and such. But then people pass in the circle of announcement of going to attackers. 
it has gone back to Cissei, and now she's allowed to declare attackers. She declares attackers, then you send it around the circle again. And you do that for damage, and you do that for blockers, and you do that for mo- not everything. Like, we don't- we didn't go like hardcore because there's a passing in the circle, a priority of drawing a card in the up un keep and then you have other priority checks here and there so you basically ship this around quite a lot and that is something to get used to now you can do it different we decided to implement that we should pass the priority usually when people want to have priority usually in situations where cdh players are interacting now we implemented a few things to improve on this step so for example you are forced to announce the name of the card you're gonna cost, announce all the costs, all the additional costs, all the targets, everything you are forced to basically announce before you're passing this. So CC would, for example, say, I am costing a cyclonic rift targeting the bird of paradise. Now, okay, that's actually a bad example because who's actually targeting a bird of paradise? But cyclonic rift costs and showcase what man has paid for it and examples the targets as well and then starts to pass the circle never allowed to do that before that now for example if for some reason it is still Cisse's turn and Tumna and Krom is asking what the Cycrypt for some reason is doing or asking about information about what the card is doing Cisse isn't actually required to answer that question until it becomes Tumna and Krom's priority so you're only allowed because there is a very simple reason for this I could ask you what your card is doing in a normal magic game and you will answer this question but if i'm doing that to consume your time then i'm exploiting the system so we implemented a thing where you're only allowed to ask questions about what a card is actually doing during your own clock time because in the end the more knowledge you have about the magic the gathering format the better player you are and this is just increasing the more skill so the less time you need to ask questions about what cards are doing is going to showcase a better skilled player and the tournaments should try to figure out the best skilled players so Im implying more skill checks is a good way to find the best player another thing we implemented was as well that you can only search your library when your clock is ticking because there's another exploit mechanic you can actually utilize here. So let's say you play a fetch land and you pass turn. Another player plays a fetch land and cracks the fetch land. You will now in this is also good. whenever you crack a fetch land that is also going to go in a circle of priority. And what you could do here is in response crack your own fetch land, and then both of you would search together. But the person's time that is being consumed is the second player played the fetch land in this case. So you're like speeding up here but you're exploiting the system you're trying to gain time so what we actually did here is that you're only allowed to search during your clock time so the person so everything will resolve just according to the stack like normal a fetch land on stack responds crack a fetch land the first fetch land will respond resolve like normal that person is now going to consume his clock time finding his target put the target into play announce its target and then the stack will continue to the next fetch land that person's clock is now going to tick and that person will find his target put the target into play and execute and explain what the target does in names and targets and such if it's just a fetch land you say scrubland and so other fetch targets have different effects like etb triggers and such because once again there is a skill like you can organize your deck like sometimes you have your cards upside downs we all hate that but there's definitely an a knowledge about knowing what you're searching for as well now you could say that this is a dexterity check like this is the dexterity skill test and yeah it kind of is but on the same time we're trying to avoid the situation where people are exploiting the clock ticking so to say and gaining time and taking time from other people the only problems we've ever had so far with the chess clock thing is that it is something to really get used to it is demanding that you have multiple monitors for your computer but with mobile phones operating on this it can work too it is always hard to like showcase on your mobile phone but i gave my link to myself and here i can as you can see i can move the clock on my mobile phone without any problems like this so you can sit with your mobile phone on like your table like this 
And once you have priority, you just click on it, pass the circle around, so to say. So it's very easy to do this like on Paper Magic, over at Discord, on a spell table game, so to say. Everyone just have to connect with their mobile phones onto this website. It could absolutely be viewed a little bit annoying because you have to sit and click so many times like I know I don't have anything to do. I'm F6, click, 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 no, pass, 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 pass. I don't have anything against your attackers. I don't have anything against your triggers. Can we just proceed with the game faster? But the game becomes very, very structured this way. And in the end, nothing is really perfect. But I gotta say, I personally really like it. That's my experience so far. So if you're running tournaments, in your local game store this is actually something you can apply if everyone have a sh like a mobile phone you just create a chess clock on your mobile phone with the link that i gave you everyone sets up their mobile phones on the table like this and you can run a chess clock tournament in real paper magic in your local game store or if you want to do an online tournament with chess clocks over at spell table everyone can just gain a link like this you create the chess clock match so to say here and share the link to all the participants in your pod and then you're good to go and of course you have to understand the rules and such regarding the chess clock system and, and things i'm not saying that the 90 minute time limit that people are doing normally these days in cdh tournament is wrong i'm just saying that this is an alternative you can choose whatever option you prefer personally i'm just trying to share my experience and showcase other alternatives in any case guys, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It's a very niche, niched subject, but I personally think it's a very important subject. I hope it helps you out in some form of way, regardless of what form of project you're working on. Take care guys, and I'll see you in the next video.